Hello and welcome to today's video. So now we're taking a look at a few bookshops I visited on a recent trip to Liverpool, as well as uh, the Ironbridge bookshop well, in Ironbridge. So uh, this was my first stop, uh, Henry Bowen Books, and uh, they've been around since the late 80s, I understand. Um, this is not their original location. They have moved once. And um, apparently, and sadly, Liverpool is not quite the hub for secondhand bookshops that it used to be. Um, but this was my first stop and uh, everything's accessible on foot. So uh, this is quite a nice, uh, nice one to get to from where we were staying. So I was in Liverpool for a few days with the wife and uh, naturally I wanted to uh, investigate all the bookshops. And uh, I'd heard, you know, some people had recommended a few places to check out. Sadly, a couple of them have already gone. They've um, they've closed down in the last few years since sort of COVID recently. So I only checked out three actual secondhand bookshops in Liverpool and uh, also the Ironbridge bookshop in Ironbridge. So this one here, then Henry Bourne Books, you've got to say it's, it's sort of in disarray. Um, you can sort of get that from the outside here. Um, there is stock just about everywhere, every nook and cranny. Um, the good thing is it's not that expensive. So if you see something that you quite like, it's very reasonably priced. And uh, I was there towards the end of the day. So between, say, four and five o'clock. And um, the uh, shop was quite busy with students coming in. I guess they just sort of finished university. And uh, they were looking for a lot of the classics and things like that, which they had downstairs. So basically, the shop is on two floors. As you can see, there's, there's boxes and boxes and stuff in, in front of the bookcases. In all honesty, they've got perhaps more stock than they can get out. But there was space upstairs, so maybe some of it just needed to be moved upstairs. But um, like the second bookshop we'll go to in a minute, um, really good stocks of uh, military history. Uh, which uh, you, know, you don't always see, and uh, this shop had a pretty good run of it. There was uh, there we are, a little cameo there. Uh, there wasn't so much genre fiction, the stuff that we're generally interested in on this channel. There was some, and we'll, we'll have a look at the science fiction uh, when we get upstairs. A bit of crime down here. I mean, I don't know if that's really their market, um, but they did have like a little bit of everything, really. And you could see that they were uh, they had um, bought various collections over time, and uh, well, they just had stuff absolutely everywhere. So uh, there seemed to be a couple of people working there, plus a couple of people, um, customers who were perhaps regulars who were going um, have a cup of coffee, have a chat, and talk books. Um, but it did make uh, filming it a little bit tricky because uh, there isn't a lot of room in like the the, uh, the space between the book uh, bookcases really to have a little look around. So uh, I filmed the best I could, and I don't think it's come out too bad. I have uh, upped my camera quality just lately, and uh, I think the results, hopefully, on these sort of book visits, will be uh, a little bit better than what they have been in the past. Yeah, from every venue, pretty much, um, I managed to pick up some stuff, and I will do my haul, such as it is, at the end of the uh, at the end of the video, so you can have a look and see what I ended up buying. Everyone was pretty friendly. This is uh, fairly near the till, and the more modern fiction, but you can see it wasn't exactly strict A to Z. There was stuff absolutely everywhere. Now this is sort of going up the steps and there's a bit of a science fiction and fantasy subsection sort of halfway on the steps and then that's looking down on the ground floor so you can see get an idea of what it's actually like you see a very good picture that's exactly it now here we are upstairs where there's a lot more room there's chairs you can sit down if you want to as well and uh, I just sort of systematically work my way through the rest of the shelves They're absolutely fine with me filming the place. I think it's been filmed more than once before and there's uh, a few reviews and photos up on Google as well. But 
But yeah, as you can see, plenty to see yet more military history as well. Quite a surprise seeing so much of it. I am trying to pick up the Anthony Beaver books in first printing, but I didn't see any that I didn't already have, uh, sadly. But yeah, quite a bit there, nice history sections. Box of Ordnance Survey maps there on the floor. It gives you, I mean, there isn't a better feel. This is exactly, if you went there today, this is what it, you're going to be uh, presented with. A bit of a mishmash, you could say. There is organisation there, but perhaps not the best organisation. Um, but, you know, there's only a couple of people there and they're busy. They've got people coming in a lot. But you know, when I was there, the shop was busy. There's people coming in and out all the time. There's people buying stuff. So it's a good sign. It seems fairly healthy. Um, that can't be said for everything. I did go into the Waterstones in Liverpool one, uh, one of the flagship branches. It's on. It's a huge branch of Waterstones, in fact, on two floors. And I was in there with with the wife, and there was um, I was a I was surprised at the amount of staff. So there was perhaps two members of staff on each floor, um, and there was maybe three or four in the Waterstones cafe. And in the fifteen minutes or so that I was in there, I didn't see anybody buy a single book which I was really quite surprised at. So uh, make of that what you will. That was not the case in these second-hand shops. So uh, I was very pleased to see that. Um, I know Liverpool has a really healthy selection of independent bookshops, and um, they're quite championed by the uh, by the locals, I feel. So, um, you know, get on them for uh, surviving in a tough market. The new book market is, is tough. It's as simple as that. The Liverpool One store was a very, very nicely laid out and beautiful store. Um, but just, you know, I didn't see anyone buying anything. It's just everyone was in the cafe, which is a little bit weird. It's a little biography section here and then leading into the uh, science fiction and fantasy that was on offer. It wasn't bad. But, you know, not a, a massive amount of stuff, let's be honest. Um you wouldn't really want to rush down and make a, a special trip if science fiction and fantasy was your thing, or even horror, really. A little bit of glare there from the sun. I'll try and spend a little bit longer on the, uh, the sections we'd be interested in, on this channel at least. So better than you see in some second-hand bookshops, but still hardly setting the world on fire, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> you know, Ooh, an odd Michael Moorcock. Uh, that was actually okay. That was one I didn't have. So um, I think it was um, £3 or £2.99. Um, so that wasn't too bad. A few Stephen Kings, a little uh, pan lozenge there. Classic stuff. The Poppy Bright, she's pretty good. But yeah, nothing, you know, to set the world on fire. But at the same time, at least they've got a bit of a section. Yeah, so I didn't end up buying too much in the science fiction, but it was uh, nice just to see a bit of a section there. Dean Koontz is there on the bottom. And this is sort of um, in the middle of the uh, upstairs floor. Evidently, they looked like they'd had um, a big climbing collection coming. <laughs> Lots of climbing books. The Alpine Journal. Guess you couldn't make it up, could you? Look at that. It's all on uh, sort of outdoor pursuits and uh, climbing stuff. Quite a nice antique section as well. Collect books on collectibles. I always cast my eye over that to see if there's an odd book or comic rated one that I've not come across before. Didn't see anything this time round, but I did double check. Little book on American postcards is quite nice. I didn't pick it up, but did have a little look through that one. And this is uh, working our way through the uh, on the right hand side now. And it, as I said, it's just all good sort of stock. You know, it's. Uh, what you would expect to find in your typical second-hand bookshop. Nothing outstanding. I didn't see much in the way of like collectibles, 
modern first editions, nothing like that at all. It was just bog standard books that people might want for their content rather than as a collectible. Um, no, no real sign of anything when, which I picked up saying, oh, first printing or anything like that. It was just, this is the price. This is what it's going to be. And not that there's anything wrong with that at all. Um, they did have a little computer open downstairs. That's usually a sign that the dealer's listing stuff onto, uh, ABE books or eBay and places like that. Um, although, um, that's just a guess, but yeah, they, I imagine anything really juicy goes online. It tends to be the way nowadays. Um, most secondhand bookshops do online as well as the retail store hand in hand. And that's not a bad way to go. But yeah, it's a big shop. I would allow perhaps half an hour to an hour to go through all if you really want to have a good proper look. Um, yeah, give yourself up up to an hour. That's probably enough. And uh, you'll be able to go through it, depending on what you were looking for. I said from the city centre itself, it's probably a 15 minute walk. Now, this is Reed of Liverpool. And now he probably had the best secondhand stock um, in the town. Uh, but unfortunately, I went in and he didn't want me to film. So I always respect that. Um, he says, I don't put anything on social media. I don't go online at all. I don't advertise. It's just customers walking in. So um, no footage of that. There it is. So he had some dirt cheap stuff outside. Um, inside, yeah, some really good stuff. I don't, I'm not sure what he didn't want me to show. Um, but, you know, I had a good old chat with the guy. But that was Reed of Liverpool. Um, now we're on to Oxfam. So um, Reed of Liverpool actually advised me to check out the Oxfam because... It is not exclusively books, but there's a lot of book content in here. And um, I didn't actually find anything in here because there wasn't much in the way of vintage. There was a few, as we'll see in a minute, a few like 50s pulps and that, which I don't really actively collect stuff. But uh, from that era, you know, those sorts of magazines, these ones here. And, you know, if I buy those at all, it'll be like I'd be buying them in bulk and... Uh, I think some of their pricing was a little OTT, shall we say, uh, judging on the condition. But even so, I would recommend popping into the Oxfam. They had some interesting stuff. Um, you know, it's, it was probably better laid out than Henry Bourne books, in all honesty, with the sections and what have you. So from that point of view, <laughs> it was it might be worth a, a little top. Really, really central, so it's easy to find. And uh, you never know, you might find a DVD or a Blu-ray or something else at the same time. Kid stuff there, travel. Yeah, as I said, really well organised, nicely laid out shop. It was well lit. I mean, it was better than the actual bookshop, um, you know, Hen Henry Bourne. So uh, with regards to the actual layout of the place. So yeah, pr pretty good. But I didn't buy anything there. I did buy some stuff from Henry Bourne. I bought a little par from David Reed, uh, which we'll have a look at, as I said, in a minute. And then we'll move on to our final bookshop of the uh, few days away that I had. So all of these are in Liverpool, Liverpool town centre. And uh, we were there for a few days and we did the bookshops and we did uh, the Beatles tour and we did a couple of Beatles museums and went to a sort of comedy club act as well. It was a great, great few days away, which I really enjoyed. And uh, on the way back, I thought, why don't we take a trip to Ironbridge? So it's on the way back. It wasn't that much of a detour. Um, I went there about a year and a half ago um, and, uh, and really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I thought, yeah, we'll have a little look. So uh, that was it for Liverpool. I wouldn't say it was the book capital of the world, I'm afraid to say. Um, but if you're in town, for whatever reason, um, those are probably the three places to check out. David Reed's probably the best selection of all, um, but just don't try and film anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. This is still in the charity show, isn't it? Piles of Enemy and the Liverpool Football Programmes, which uh, you would sort of, I guess, expect to find. And uh, yeah, pretty good. And then, yeah, well, that was uh, something as well. So anything new to save people coming in and out every day, they've got back-to-back um, -back four shelves of all their new books. So the new books all go on there. 
And once I guess they've been there for a week or two, then they get put into the main stock, which I thought that's quite a good idea. So here we are in Ironbridge, and it's a, a beautiful little area. It was pouring down with rain when we got there, but there is the actual Iron Bridge in question. It's uh, by by the river there. I'm not sure what that river is called. We parked a little bit out of town, and then I walked up actually into the into the little. Um, well, you could say it's sort of the shopping area. Um, there's a few shops. There's like a cafe. There is parking all around, but it's very much short term, like up to an hour or so. Um, there we are. So that's a little map of where we're at in Ironbridge. Yeah, World Heritage. There's the bridge in question. I remember last time I visited, I didn't actually film the bridge. So I thought I'd definitely catch her up this time. Really, really nice drive down there. As you can see, there's a few little shops. And this little row of shops here, this is where the Ironbridge Bookshop is. And it is a penguin specialist, although they do general secondhand bookshop books as well. It is a penguin specialist. They've always got a nice display of the different colours in the window there. Very, very nice, as you can see. Uh, the shop is run by um, a young lady called Meg, and she uh, she's, uh, well, it's her, her business, and she does a very good job. And uh, she does also do mail order, I should say, as well. So if you've seen anything in here that you quite like, um, you can contact Meg. Um, I'll pop a link in the description down below. She's got a very active Instagram feed as well, where she covers new editions. So you can always get hold of them through there. And just inside the door then, so I filmed the downstairs first of all, and it's got a very good science fiction section, as you can see, loads of SF masterworks, which is good news. Certain ones have been remaindered now of those, so uh, there's a few, you know, not the full list by any means, but maybe about uh, 30 or 40 different books that you can pick up fairly reasonably priced now. And as you can see, she's not short of a few books here. So most sections had a few books in front of a few books on the shelves. So you do need to be a little bit hands on, which doesn't help when you're actually filming. But if there is an area you want to look at, it's, what I would do is just take the books down, have a look at the books behind and then pop them back in. And that seems to be the best way to do it. And uh, downstairs is more your general fiction. I think they're very, very cheap. I think she was like three for five pounds on the um the three for five pounds on the paperbacks which is a really good price i think that included new hardbacks as well so she certainly wasn't um expensive at all you know it's so really good obviously there's some collector's pieces in that so some early pan and, and we'll see the penguins in a minute um but generally i thought the prices were very very good and uh yeah finally get some decent literary Literary stock, which is excellent. Yeah, Penguin Modern Classics and what have you, Vintage Classics. Little pile of bond there, Ian Flemings. And yeah, anything um, that you weren't sure about would be, like say, priced inside the cover there. Some dictionaries. I think you'll find, you know, it really is worth a trip. If you're a Penguin fan, especially, it's worth going there, update your wants list and uh, allow perhaps two hours to have a good look around properly, you know, um, because, you know, there's a lot to get through and there's stuff all over the place, particularly if you're like Penguins, you know, the uh, not all the main series is all together. Some of it's dotted around depending on if it's a non-fiction subject or, for example, the plays are separate, the poetry is separate, the specials are separate, the puffins are separate. So there's a lot to get through. So bear that in mind if you are going along. Here we are, there's the Shakespeare there. So there's loads of uh, vintage penguin in there. So I really only had a chance to very, very cursorily have a quick look over what was available uh, downstairs because I knew the goodies that were upstairs awaiting me. <laughs> after visiting last last year. That's early penguin poetry there. Some nice stuff. Vintage pan. And uh, she calls them vintage books, but it's basically just books that are, you know, the old beautiful cloth bound stuff. There we 
know, very nice. Quite a nice little stand for the uh, Black Classics as well. Some Natural History, Observer Books. God, it's a really packed shop, but it's also just, just got a really nice vibe to it. Once again, busy all the time. It was a Saturday, so um, there are plenty of people coming in and buying books all the time I was there, which is great to see. And here we are. We're going to be going upstairs now where the... Uh, kids department is and also the, uh, the penguin books more observers on the spinner look at all those SF uh, masterpieces Fantastic stuff. There we are. Now um, Meg's got a little cabinet of her more collectible books there as well. And uh, like any bookshop, you're going to get a few come your way. It's a very nice early Rupert. It looks like a 1940s softback annual, which are always uh, desirable. Nice little display there. Children's books again. It's just got a really good vibe, this bookshop. It's one of my favourites. And then uh, we've got the Penguin Specials. Uh, classics and modern classics. There's a big pile of buildings of England there. Lots and lots of stuff. I didn't. I just didn't have time to go through all the puffins this time round. Some classics there. I was on a bit of a tight time scale because we needed to get home. Uh, so here's the, the penguins now. So as I said, much more than your average place. Um, I think the first two or three shelves are uh, fiction, classic fiction, and then you've got crime. And uh, then you've got the pelicans at the bottom. And what I did, I just scooped off some of the ones on the front and then I could go through and have a little look against my uh, my wants list. And I certainly found um, you know over a dozen there in the time I was there that I fancied. There's a couple of shells full of crime. Nothing mega early, but mega's got, you know, really good customer base for this sort of stuff now. Um, but she will accept once lists, and I've suggested maybe for some of my more minor series, I might drop her a once list so she can check some of those uh, slightly lesser series that I've got racked up. There's Rupert there keeping an eye on that little row of crime. Doing a good job. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so you can see what a what a task you'd have, and then there's the travel and the biographies and some of the miscellaneous stuff. I said lots of pelicans along the bottom. So there's plenty to see if you are the penguin collector. I think you'll be. Uh, I think you'll agree. You know, there's some brilliant stuff there. But allow a couple of hours. That's the only advice I can give you. Um, and um, Meg won't mind you going through them all and uh, checking them out. The Churchill one's really nice, painting as a pastime. I've got that one. A uh, nice batch of uh, classic puffins. I did buy some last time I was there, but I didn't have, I ran out of time to have a real good look, sadly, this time round. And there's the, uh, this is the rest of the uh, children's section. Some lovely Rupert there, which is good. A. Milne, Beatrix Potter, all the sort of classics you would expect, as well as um, in the middle, which I don't think I actually filmed, was all, all the sort of the more popular recent um, children's picture books, you know, um, the Julia Donaldson and things like that. So, uh, yeah, well, well worth a visit to uh, to Meg 
at the Ironbridge Bookshop. It's a great, great location. Put that one on your uh, your destination list. Good stuff. Okay, so just a quick look at the books I bought. So from Henry Bourne, I got this one, which was the SF Masterworks. A Joanna Rust, The Female Man. I picked up an odd Picador, which is uh, an imprint I've been uh, collecting a little bit of late. And I also picked this rather nice book up, Flags of the World. Um, it's a bit Big Bang Theory, fun with flags at £3.50, but it came out in 1915, this one. Uh, so during the First World War, and it's an absolute beauty. Uh, it's got illustrated plates inside as well. Um, it's a really, really nice book on, uh, on flags, which I do have a passing interest in. And uh, it was so nice for the money. I mean, you really can't, uh, you can't beat that for three pounds fifty, can you? And uh, look at that, nineteen fifteen. So quite, quite nice that one. So that was from Henry Bourne Books. So from Reader Liverpool, I picked up five vintage Picadors, all first printings, all from the seventies or early eighties, and these were all less than three pounds a pop each. So I was very, very pleased to get those. He may not have let me film his store, but he couldn't stop me filming my actual pickup. So that's what I got from a. Uh, Reed of Liverpool. And this is the stuff I got finally from the Ironbridge bookshop at Meg. So um, I have a look through these. These are all about three pounds a pop each. Um, they're all sort of later 60s titles, most with really nice spines. They're numbers that I don't don't already own. So as you can see, these are really nice ones. Um, so there you go. So I hope you enjoyed my little look round Liverpool and the Ironbridge bookshop. Uh, as I said, not Masses of stuff, but certainly worth uh, worth a visit. Definitely go to the Ironbridge Bookshop if you get a chance, because that's uh, a real location to check out if you're a collector. Um, if you have enjoyed today's videos, of course, do please uh, give the video a thumbs up. Do please hit that subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage Penguin book content, as well as other vintage paperbacks. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.